Hello, today we're going to look at how to generate graphs for a simple harmonic oscillator. In this case, a horizontal trolley between two springs. The mass is half a kilogram, the spring has a constant of 10 newtons per meter, and the initial displacement is 0.05 meters. We're going to do the iterative method, which is very prone to mistakes, and this is why we're using Excel, because it makes life easier. So now it's time to look at the table that we're going to use. So here's time in seconds, as you can see. Uh, change of velocity, meters per second. Velocity, again in meters per second. Change in displacement in meters and displacement. So our first job then is to put in our initial starting consistence, i.e. at t equals zero. At this point then, the trolley is pulled out to the side but isn't moving, so it has no velocity, no change in displacement, hasn't started moving. Its initial displacement is just the maximum amplitude figure, i.e. 0.05. So we'll use an Excel formula to write that in, in case you want to change it later. And you just do that by putting equals and then clicking on cell, in this case, I4. Now you'll notice that I put in the dollar signs here, which means that this becomes a reference that doesn't move when you click and drag cells down. We don't really need it there, but we've done it anyway. Now, as we said, our uh, time interval is 0.1 seconds, so we have to write 0.1 in this one. So what will delta V be after 0.1? Well, we can just use the expression, so we've got to write out a formula for it. We've got to write a formula for delta V equals minus Kx over M times delta T. So, let's do that. So first of all, minus 1 for the minus sign, times the square for K, which is I5. Next up then, we have to multiply by the value for x at the start of our new interval, which is going to be 0.05 from the last interval. So we just put times F10 in this case. Next up, we have to times it by the value of delta t, which is just the square i6. And then divide the whole jolly lot by m, which is just this square here, i3. So that gives us then the change in the velocity over the first interval, minus 0.1. Now, I'm clicking on that value one, it's 0.1, and you can see that it's highlighted green, purple, and blue squares up there. We need to fix those values because they, they're constants throughout the whole iterative process. So again, if we put in the dollar signs, as you can see we're doing, that will fix the cells for us. Now we're going to do the purple one, which is delta T, and lastly, we're going to do the green one, which is the mass at the bottom there. So those cells are now fixed. So let's see what we get for value for our velocity. Well, the velocity is just the previous value for the velocity, d10 in this case, added to the change of velocity over the interval, or c11 in this case. That gives us a value for the actual velocity at the end of 0.1 seconds. Now we need to look at delta x to get the delta x value, and we can see that is going to be simply delta x equals velocity, which we've got in the previous cell. So we put that into our formula, d11 times delta t, which is going to be the cell from our fixed conditions. So we need to click back in that formula and make the red value, i6, fixed by using the strings, like this. Good, and now we've got a value for the change in the displacement. And just similarly to the velocity, our new displacement is equal to the previous displacement. Add the change in the displacement, which in this case is negative, which you'd expect because the trolley is moving towards the center. And so here we are with our second set of values. Well, let's move on to where it is gonna be after 0.2 seconds. So our third set of values. Now here we can just use the power of Excel and copy all those values down like this. And here they are. And that's our second row. See how easy that was. Now, you might be wondering what this little green triangle was. In fact, I am as well. This is Excel trying to be helpful. It thinks there's an error in the formulas, but there isn't. So we can just ignore it by clicking ignore. Now we have enough values in the T column to get Excel to fill it in for us. So if you highlight all three and drag it down, it will fill them in with a 0.1 interval between each value rather than the normal one that it would do. Now it's just a question of clicking all the cells with formulas in and dragging them down so that they line up. Now, here we go. There's a great big set of numbers in that last column for displacement. So let's have a look at a few. 
as you can see, the first three values clearly show the trolley moving in towards the center and midpoint. And the next three values are getting bigger negatives as it moves out to its furthest extreme on the left. Then we can see the negative values getting smaller as it comes back into the middle. And lastly, you can see it moving back out towards the right hand side or the positive direction again. Well, everything looks as if it's behaving as it should do, but of course physicists are never happy until they draw a graph. So we're going to use Excel to do that for us. So we're going to plot a graph of T versus displacement. We just highlight the two columns there. Do insert chart if I can find it. It's going to be a scatter graph. Oh, look at that. There is a beautiful cosine curve, just as we'd expect. Mind you, there are a few things that aren't great about it. And I'm not talking about the fact that it doesn't have a title. More seriously, though, is the fact that you can't see a clearly defined peak position. The best way to sort this out is to make the time interval smaller, which you can see I've just done by making it a hundredth of a second instead of 0.1, although now, of course, we only get a tiny bit of the curve. So, there are all sorts of balancing acts going on here. I'm going to set it back, I think, to 0 0.05, yeah. Now, it's really looking nice now, isn't it? A much clearer sense of where it goes through the zero and where the maximum and minimums are. Of course, another way to do with this is just to add a whole pile more rows in. So, let's just click a bit, drag it down. You can see that the displacement column on the far right is showing the right kind of behaviour for us, moving back in towards the middle and across. However, the time column on the left has gone from having a 0.1 interval to a 1 interval. This is a default position for Excel and it's extremely annoying. So we have to highlight two or three cells and then drag down and now it will be correct. Now it's time to redraw the graph. So we highlight our T column slightly over the bottom there and again highlight the T column highlight the X column displacement and then draw our new graph as you can see a much nicer better defined curve now if you're on the ball you'll notice that we also have a velocity column so, of course, the question goes up, why don't we graph that as well against T and see if we get the expected result? So, let's do that. Highlight in the T column, use your control to highlight the V column, press control again and highlight the displacement column. Then look for your scatter graph. Insert. Oh, beautiful graphs there. The orange is the displacement graph, in other words, the original one, and the blue is the velocity. Don't get too hung up about the different amplitudes. Though you can clearly see that the velocity is the gradient of the displacement curve, just as we'd expect. Last step then, we're now going to see if we can add acceleration curve to our graph. Now we're going to use the formula that acceleration, or d2x over dtx squared, is equal to minus kx over m. So all we do is bung in a minus 1 for the minus sign, times it by the square for k, just like we did before, and then times it by the square for x, which is in the previous column, and then divide it by mass. And we get minus 1 for that first square. Now notice that, again, we have some fixed cells. In this case, it's going to be the purple one and the blue one. So we need to insert our dollar symbols to fix them. Now all we have to do is drag down to generate the table, or the last column in the table, we should say. And you can see here it comes. So let's quickly generate the graph then for the time against acceleration. You might recall that this is the minus cosine curve, or the negative of the displacement. And it should look very much like that. So well done. Here it is. So lastly then, let's select the T, V, X and acceleration columns in order to create a graph of all three. And here it is. And here's an even better version on which you can clearly see the orange is the displacement, the blue is the velocity and the grey is the acceleration. Notice how they produce exactly the same phase relationships as you would expect for these graphs. Isn't Excel wonderful? Thanks for watching.